probably said it a hundred times. Can I say it again? And this is about our salvation and about how we are in Christ and, and, and to get a better feel for that. Uh, we're going to deal with the subject of Jesus defining his name. God had a plan for Jesus' life. Jesus was part of the plan. He discussed it with his dad what he would do. And some of the old black, uh, Baptist preachers used to personify the conversation. And they would say that the, Holy, that the Holy Spirit came to God and said, Father, if you make me a body, I, I'll go down there and save them. I'll go get your family. I'll go get your children. And they said, the word of God said, no, Father, send me. I'm the word. I'm your word. I'm the one that spoke all of these things in existence. Nothing was made that was not made by the word of God. And John said the word of God became flesh and dwelt among us. So with that in mind, we're going to talk about some, some issues that bring us closer together as Christians. How is it when that Jehovah Witness person come to your house and tell you there's no Trinity in the Bible, I don't want you arguing with him. I want you to admit that Trinity is not in the Bible. But what other way can you explain what God has given us? He said, oh, Israel, your God is one God. Didn't he say that? And we just read in the creation, what did it say? In the beginning, L. That's the single name for God. L, E-L. In the beginning, L created the heavens and the earth. Go down two verses, and it's going to say Elohim, which is plural. So we got a God that is one God. But he has three personalities. God the Father, you can't intimidate him. God the Father, you can't do nothing to him. But he said, do not grieve the Holy Spirit by which you are sealed to the day of redemption. The Holy Spirit is going to dwell in you until the day of redemption, to the day that you are redeemed from this body. So grieving means you can do things and break the Holy Spirit's heart. And that's why it's written that you can break the heart of God. That's the Holy Spirit. He said, don't grieve me. He said, it just reminds me of a man and woman coming together. God said, neighbor, you will become one flesh. God is trying to show us what he had with man and wife is almost what he had with God. In perfect love, it will be the same connection. That's why he said the Holy Spirit will be in you, and it will be in me, and it is now in you. When God going to take us into his family, he makes no mistake when he say, the body of Christ. After we do a whatever, we're going to preach. Let me okay? get to the open ending of it. We're going to do what is known as, a, if you're in school, they got a class called a survey class. And now a survey class is not designed to tie you in into any specific thing. A survey class is designed to make you familiar with everything in that field. Now, when you go to take a, a degree, an MBA, or a D, D, uh, M, uh, Masters of Divinity, DMDiv, that's a, a survey. Those are not tied in academic subject matters because they deal with a whole series of things. An MBA is a terminal degree. You don't get a doctorate in, in, after an MBA. It's a terminal degree. MDiv is a terminal degree. You don't go from MDiv and get a doctorate in ministry. So I'm going to give you a survey course this morning. We're going to touch on just about everything in the life of Jesus. Because if you know Jesus, you know God. What did Jesus say? He said, I go to the Father. And Thomas said, well, wait a minute. Uh, where are you going? I'm going. He said, no, just show us the Father. That'd be all right for us. He said, that suffices us. If you just show us the Father. He said, Philip, have you been so long with me? You don't know that when you see me, you see the Father? I am in the Father. The Father's in me. If you don't believe it, look at the very works I've done. I raised the dead. I've laid a hand on the leper. 
You mean to tell me you don't see this? You think an average human being can do this? I could speak and Lazarus would get up out of the grave. Somebody told me, one of my instructors told me, he said, he said, Hank, did you know that if Jesus didn't say, Lazarus, come forth, everything would have got in. That's the kind of job you're talking about. Now, let's hone in on what the man said this morning. He said that God made the creation and said it was good. Now, this wasn't the beginning of the world. This, uh, this was the beginning of the universe that we live in. But God had been living with angels and stuff for eons. When he got ready to make this universe, he said, let us do this. He's talking to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let's do this. We can handle this. So he had to, everything he built was for man because God created a creature that he fell in love with. And he said, I'm going to make him kind of like us. Give him a little thought pattern. Give him a little chance to do some things on his own. And did you say this morning that to name something has to be the creator that names it? Adam didn't create the animal, but God brought him into the process. He said, animal, look at these animals. What you going to call them, Adam? See, he brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. So Adam, he gave the privilege to name the animals on the earth. So God had a good thing with Adam. The Bible said he and Adam would meet in the cool of the evening in the garden. And they would commune, sit down and converse and talk about the birds and the bees or whatever they talked about. But it was a good thing. God said, I like this. This is good. And he was testing little Adam out. Adam, what you going to call these right here? I'm going to put some fish in and see what you're going to call them. This is a buffalo. This is an eel. <laughs> Somebody said the little girl, they had them in the uh, daycare center. And it was Adam and said, I like the giraffe. And what, <laughs> so Adam came up with a name like a giraffe. But anyway, let's get to the thing. Everything was good. There was nothing in conflict with God's will. Follow this thing, folks. There was no controversy or nothing in God's will. Can I take you back, say, a couple of eons back? And to tell this story right, I have to take you back way before this. Can I go back? God made a series of angels. The Bible said there was a myriad of angels. That means multitude, 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 thousands upon thousands, and 10,000 upon 10,000 of angels God had made. And one day God made a special angel. He named him Lucifer, the son of the morning, and gave Lucifer many powers that he had never given another created being. And he was the one that was supposed to present the praises to our God. That's why a lot of preachers say he was head of the choir. I don't know he was head of the choir, but he was supposed to submit the praises to our God. Now, you've got to think to understand what do praises mean. It has substance in that universe. So to submit the praises to our God. That's why when we praise God, it's not something that we come up with. God seeks the praises of his children. He, he will inhabit the praises of his people. If you want God near you, you start praising him. He will inhabit, he will get in the flow of the, the praises. He does that. That's why when the Israelites would go off to battle, they would use the, the tribe of Judah to go first. That was the tribe of praise. They were the one coming in with the music, musician with them and everything. Boom, 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 boom. God went in. He inhabit, inhabit the praises of his son. Now, this special angel was to present the glory and the praises. What is praise and what is glory? Now, we use the glory now to mean the glory is something you get when you, uh, glory is something that you get when you, uh, 
When you, when you risk your life, the opposite side, both sides, is the glory that you will put something ahead of you. That is part of the glory. That's why the Marine Corps had the best looking outfits, because they are the glory boys. They die first. Okay, now, they submit the glory. Now, I'm going to give you a term here called pneumos. That's a Greek term for the spirit. And the praises in, are part of the spirit, the spirit of praises. And it is called pneumonosity. In other words, when the praise go up, in that praise, in that goes up a spirit, the pneumonosity. And that's what goes up. To show you how important this is, I tell you this is survey course. Show you how important this spirit is, of this spirit of praise here. God said, No one will take my glory. He said he will let no one share in his glory. Nobody gonna take any of the glory that belongs to God from him. He's not gonna do it. Was it a thing in the, in, the, in the New Testament? He said he was on a, sitting up there and he had wrote this great speech. And said, oh, he's like a God. And the Bible said, oh, worm broke out on him and ate him up because he gave not the glory to God. It was God that did. And that's why we have to be so careful when we do things in the church to make sure that we let God have the glory. If you got the glory get in you, it'll it taint you and just mess you up. One may not break out on you, be just as messed up, and you start to get all the glory. You will puff up and blow up. We got some now. I saw a, a movie, I mean, not a movie, a program on TV. The man took the, the prize that went to, uh, 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 I can't think of the girl's name, and gave it to Beyonce. And he done blew up. <laughs> he, he let himself get into himself to the point He's taking the glory from God. Now, do we understand that God is not going to share his glory with anyone? That's what he said. I will not share my glory. Now, Satan was given a job, or Lucifer was given, he became Satan after he lost his job. <laughs> his name was Lucifer, the son of the morning, and he was supposed to give the praise to God. <clears throat> but Lucifer wanted to keep a little bit for himself. He wanted to keep a little bit for himself. So that's what Lucifer wanted to do. He wanted to keep a little bit of the glory for himself. And the more he kept, the bigger he blew up. He finally blew up to the point that God had to kick him out of heaven. I'm cutting it short, but God kicked him out of heaven. Okay? When God kicked him out, Lucifer had developed him a, a, a little following, man. He had a bunch of two, a bunch of angels following him wherever Lucifer go. His little posse went with him, so God kicked him and his posse out, out of heaven, out of that domain. Now, there was a problem in heaven with the created being. Now. God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is about to make another decision, going to deal with making another kind of creature. He said, let's do this. Lucifer then took a third of the angels. We don't need them. He told, he told his word, he said, I'll make the, your enemies your footstool. Don't worry about that. And they made man. God had a game. His plan was he was going to take and make a clay creature and put him over Satan. Satan was bad. He had the powers of God. The Bible said he could present himself as an angel of light. And he convinced all those angels to go with him. And God said, I'm going to make a clay creature, born of clay. And I'm going to give him dominion. I'm going to make him a world where he can be God. I'm going to show Satan. You, you could have had this, brother. But Satan had, Satan had a, another idea. He says, oh, no, he ain't getting away with this. He's going to put me out and then going to make, uh-uh, no, no. I ain't going to have none of this. 
So Satan said, laid in the cut. Can I use this, this vernacular? Is everybody following me? Satan laying back in the cut till the garden got built. He laid back there until everything was going. He sat there and watched Adam and God having all these get-togethers in the garden. He see him and God just having a good time. He's still in the cut. He ain't come out. He waited till God made woman. <laughs> I, I, I'm not trying to mess with nothing. But he, he said, you got to understand something now. God had a relationship with Adam. He didn't have a relationship with Eve at the time. It was a relationship with Adam. So that was a, a little place that Satan could put his finger in a little spot. Did Adam tell Eve everything? We don't know. But what was the first question that Satan asked Eve. She said, did God tell y'all you couldn't eat from this? Yeah, he said, yeah, he, he told us that. Told us we shouldn't even touch it. I, I don't never remember reading God saying don't touch it, but that's what Eve said. The thing is, he was slick enough, did I use the right word? Conniving enough Cunning enough, beguiling enough, he convinced her that God holding something back on you. Do y'all get this? God is holding something back. Why would God don't want you to eat that? Is this starting to make sense now? This is how rebellion starts. Somebody holding something back from you. God know that if you eat that, you're going to be wise just like him. And who is he anyway? Don't put me out of here. I, I, I got something for him. Now we're going to skip a little bit. Now you get the picture. That Satan has intervened to bring onto his side. He had convinced a third of the angels. And now he has convinced a member of the party that God has placed all this hope in. All he had to do now is convince Adam to disobey God. And who was he going to use to present the bad fruit? His own wife. Somebody said that when they spoke about this, said, let us make men. I heard an old black preacher once say that. The conversation might have went like this. But you know they're going to sin. Satan going to wind them up on his finger. He going to put a ring on their neck. Satan going to have them for nightfall. And that God said, I can handle it. He'll have you, them cursing you to your face. God said, I can handle it. We can do this. I am the key master. I can do this. He said, now the penalties of sin is death. What is sin? It's to disobey God. And they disobey God. Now your game is over. You can't lie. You can't lie. They got to die. I <laughs> got you, God. Oh, Satan just did a jig. I got him now. But when God laid that thing on him, he said, look, I'm going to tell you something. For what you've done here today, the seed of that woman going to kill you. Seed of the woman going to kill Satan? How can this be? Woman don't have the seed. The seed come from the man. God didn't say nothing about man. He said the seed of that woman. That's the seed that God going to give that woman. And then what she brings into the world will be the son of God as well as the son of a human being. Y'all get to say? Now, I got one in the middle of that whole crowd that has never sinned. That has never sinned. God got himself a new rooster in the hen house. <laughs> Satan can't do nothing with that one. He can't do nothing with that one. And the penalty of sin is what? Is to die. And I got somebody who can die for this. Because he has never sinned. 
He can pay the price for all of them. I can get him out of it. That's why the Bible said, if Satan had just known that he was getting ready to release the son of glory, no way would he have crucified Jesus. He took the whipping and the beating. And while he was on the cross, he didn't even see him then. He said, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. This is, this is how Jesus, and this is how he was able to pay the price for our sin. So if you think you got to live so woolly woolly, you got to let him in. Well, when I quit smoking, I'm coming to church. I said, you can go wherever you want to go because if smoking ain't going to keep you out of hell. You keep smoking, you'll get there a little faster. <laughs> you'll get there a little faster you, if you're smoking them unfiltered or whatever. I don't, I don't know that much about them now. I used to smoke them, smoke my share, <laughs> and drink my little chair of that joy juice too. But the thing is, don't think the joy juice is going to keep you out of heaven either. Because Jesus had them a little taste of wine too. And he told them, boys, and we're going to do that today. This is communion Sunday. What did he say? The next time we partake of the fruit of the vine, we'll be in my house. Y'all know we're going to get a little taste. You hear if some people try to justify it, it's going to tell you, well, it's not firm in it. It doesn't matter. You're missing the point. Whether it's firm in it or not firm in it, Jesus can just say, wine, boom, and you got wine. That's what he did at the, wasn't at the first miracle of the power? In the wedding at Canaan? The people come, got, he, the boys come and say, they told us to do what you wanted. He said, well, just fill them pots up with water and take it to the banquet hall. Said, Why do you want to say water into the banquet hall? Got them big pebbles and things and brought them in there and splashing. Well, what water was wine then? And the master of the banquet said, Whoa, this is great, y'all. Most people wait till you get drunk and then get on rock good. <laughs> y'all have saved the best to the last. And that was the wine that Jesus made, merely by pouring water from one pot to another. Point I'm still making is that you got to understand your salvation is not on how well you can keep the rule or how long you can go without doing this and that. Paul said he was struggling with this thing. Paul said, there's things I don't want to do, but I find myself doing it, and I promise I won't do this over here, and then I find myself doing them. Who can save me from this body of death? Paul cried out. He said, thanks be to God. For Jesus Christ, if it had not been for Jesus, he would not be saved. Why am I preaching this sermon today? Because last night I saw some people are really confused. And they've been around church all their lives. They're confused on salvation. There ain't no set of rules you got to follow. Jesus said, I'm taking my, I told him later, I ain't going, I don't go to church because I'm not a hypocrite. I said, well, guess who Jesus is coming back for? He ain't coming back for you because you don't live a great life. He coming back for the church because the church is a family. He said, I am the head of the family. I am the head of the body of Christ. And the church is the body of Christ. He said, he's coming back for his church. Well, you got so many people that rot. I said, his church, not having the people come in your building. Anything, a snake can crawl up in the building. <laughs> he ain't in the church of God. God's church, if he baptized you into the body of believers, he said he will not leave nor forsake, and he's coming back for you. We're going to tighten this up because it's getting a little warm. But I want you to know that your salvation is in Christ Jesus. It's in Christ Jesus. And that's what it's going to stay. Give you one more thing here. walking away from this thing. How Jesus wanted to do what his father asked him to do. He had agreed. And now the day was creeping up on him when reality of his crucifixion is in a throne stowaway. Oh God. And with the eyes of God in his head, he could see the future. And he could see them nailing him to an old tree that he had used his word to grow 
He allowed that tree to grow up and become a sturdy oak where they would break it down and nail him to it. And he started having some real regretful pain. Then he thought, just like you and I, God can do whatever he wants to. God has all power. There's nothing impossible for God, right? Why can't God let me off? So he went to the garden at night. Let's pray. Father, he had one prayer. It prayed it for three hours. Father, let this cup pass. Let this cup pass. You got all power. There is nothing you can't do. Let this cup pass. Is there another way? What about plan B, plan C? You, God, come up with a plan. He heard nothing from heaven. He finally, after three hours, at the end of the first hour, he goes to his partner, his disciples, and they're asleep. After the second hour, they go, they're asleep again. And after the third hour, he told them, just sleep on. It's over. Because at the end of the third hour, he broke down, lifted up his eyes and lifted up his head and lifted up his head and said, Lord, not my will, but let yours be done. And with that, the price of sin was laid on the shoulders of Jesus. The price of sin. God is the power of time. So eons of years passed. In one second. And he paid the price. For our sin. And early. Sunday morning. He was nudged. By the Holy Spirit. And this time. He had a body. That had mass. But it was not flesh and bone. Neither was a product of dirt. It was the product of another universe. The Bible said when he came back, he walked right through the wall. The doors were locked and he walked right in the room. People said, oh, he's a ghost. He said, I'm not a ghost. Touch and feel me. It do a ghost. Can you feel a ghost? No, you can't feel a ghost. Then he went on and did something else. He said, do y'all got anything to eat? I said, oh, thank you, Jesus. I know I'm going to be eating up there, man. <laughs> I don't know if the, 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 the fried chicken going to make it. <laughs> but they, keep in mind, that chicken made it across uh, Noah's Ark. I mean, the, the flood. That flood, the chicken got through the flood, didn't it? On the night that the Lord was betrayed, he called his disciples together, had a meal with them. And he told Peter, he said, Peter, you're going to deny me three times. But when you turn back, strengthen your brothers. Yes, sir. God made us. He knows that we're sinners. That's why he came and why he died for us. All he asks for us to do is to turn from sin and self, turn back to him. And in that repentance we find forgiveness. Let's examine our hearts. We receive that forgiveness from the Lord. Just say a little thank you back to Him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for loving us to the end. Thank you for reaching down in your mighty strength to pull us up and choosing us and calling us to be with you. Help us to walk, Lord, in a way that is worthy of you and give us the strength to do that. As we partake of the elements this morning, Lord, let us remember your teaching as the, the cup, Lord, teaching flowing in our veins to do your will Lord and the bread of your body giving us the strength to do your will it's in Jesus name we pray amen